Hi YouTube, how you doing? Thanks for stopping by the Counselor's Guild. Today we'll be talking about entry-level positions in the mental health field. I'm Matthew, and let's get into this. Okay, so this year is going to be for junior, senior level students that have made the commitment, know what they want to do, they want to go into psych. These are the positions you need to start applying for now. Get into these jobs now uh, while you can. These are only jobs that require a GED or high school diploma. Okay. So the first one, behavioral mental health tech. These jobs are plentiful. Uh, they're very high turnover jobs, um, but they offer a lot of good experience and will benefit you greatly. And you'll learn things here that you cannot learn in school. Okay, your role would be implementing treatment programs under the direction of a clinical supervisor setting. I'm sorry, supervisor. Um, so you'll be basically working on treatment goals that the supervisor or clinician, um, usually their master level or doctorate level, uh, create and you, you, uh, you help them uh, attain their goals. Okay? So your setting, you're going to be in, in, uh, inpatient. It can be hospitals, nursing homes, substance abuse, and psychiatric care facilities. Okay? This is not a glamorous job. Um, a lot of... Um, a lot of you know physical emotional uh, verbal abuse from from the patients uh, these patients are ones that were uh, that come in and they are kind of at the bottom you know they're probably full in the relapse they been off their meds probably taking you know substances off the street um, so you're really gonna be and you're gonna be you know living with them or working where they live uh, is usually temporary um, so they have access to you you know for your eight hour shift so it's really um, it's really uh, uh, a lot of experience but high turnover because of I think all the stress that it comes with uh, the task you're going to direct care and treatment uh, or you're going to be direct care and treatment are designed to help patients achieve greater mental, physical, and social development. Okay, most people come there. Um, I mean, if they're involuntary, they'll probably stay for three days. Uh, but mostly, I think like usually two or three weeks, um, depending on the severity. Um, so you're going to be working on goals, um, and you're going to help them get back on their feet, be able to um, live in the community. Patient safety assessed for suicide, homicidal ideation, trained in physical restraints. So you do got to be uh, on on top of patients, uh, not, I guess, physically restrained. Um, I, they'll teach you how to do that. I was never taught proper physical restraints. I never had a job where I did that. Um, but I'm assuming in a hospital setting and patient, you're probably going to be learning some of those. Um, patient interactions, a lot of that. You're going to be goal setting, behavioral structuring. And reinforcement okay um, I think they also do groups um, let's see the skills you'll learn you'll be exposed to many different types of disorders and populations schizophrenia bipolar personality substance abuse depression um, and they're gonna be more I think the severe types that are usually um, you know like I said at, at, at their bottom you know they're they hit bottom um, and they become a threat to themselves or others and have to be hospitalized. Uh, so you'll also be part of the treatment planning. You may not develop the treatment goal, but you'll be in there and you'll see how uh, a treatment plan is developed. You'll do group ed education, I think in certain locations, not all. Um, medications, you'll learn medications, uh, their uses, the side effects, and their dosage. Crisis intervention, identifying early warning signs, approach, de-escalation, and finally, the, you will be exposed to the lovely world of group uh, uh, note writing, uh, which never gets old, um, <laughs> but uh, you'll, you'll start doing that. Uh, warning, I put a warning at the bottom, going to be overly exposed to difficult clients every day, every hour, every minute. Okay? Psychiatrists, maybe see them once a week, maybe twice a week at the beginning. Uh, you know, the therapists, maybe not so much, maybe once a day, but you, you're gonna be right there, you know, in the in the in the middle, uh, and you're gonna have to always be available to them. So, so it is a very stressful um, 
Good job. Uh, community mental health, that's what I started. Um, your role is a, a, a support. You won't write the treatment goals, but you will help them reach it by removing barriers to their recovery. Um, your goal basically in community mental health is to keep them in a community. You know, the whole de-hospitalization or de-institutionalization uh, back in the, well, the 50s, 60s. Um, it, it transferred the care for these uh, um, people with severe chronic mental illness into the community and they created these community mental health. Uh, I worked in a group home and uh, I think my title was like rehabilitative service associate and uh, you know you just help them you help them with their uh, you know you don't do their like um, laundry but you help them get to the laundromat you don't cook for them you support them while they cook and you make sure they don't burn the house down or anything like that um, so it's very much supportive you're helping them be independent and stay in the community uh, so task helping and assessing resources I'm sorry helping and assessing resources accessing <laughs> helping and accessing resources in the community and uh, with being independent uh, you can help them follow budget uh, shopping doctor appointments, uh, cooking, medication, symptom management, uh, and again, keeping them in a community, okay? That's uh, important. That's your, your main goal, okay? And depending on who you work with, your, your treatment plans can be different. I, I worked with, you know, mainly people with schizophrenia, and, you know, taking medication was important, having a schedule was important, picking your meds, um, did I tell you that already? Identifying your own symptoms, uh, so those were all really important, and that's what helped them stay in the community. Uh, skills, you'll be doing treatment planning. Um, when I was, I don't think I, you don't create the treatment plan, but you are part of the, the process, and you, you are the one implementing their treatment planning goals. Uh, communication, um, building those communication skills, talking with clients, um, so important. Crisis intervention, relapse crisis plans, progress note writing, empathy, building therapeutic relationships, and teamwork. Okay. Next up, crisis intervention specialists. I've never done one of these. I never worked in a, a under this title or ever uh, worked anywhere that did this. But they provide telephone-based crisis intervention. Okay, the setting looks to me, from what I read, from what I saw, it looks like it's in an office uh, and you basically have a telephone and a computer. Um, your, your task would be performing assessments, gathering information, creating plans of action, directing or referring them to resources, and follow up on some calls. The, uh, what I read, the some calls would be ones that were, you know, maybe had suicidal ideation. You want to follow up with them, make sure they're, they're following their plan or seeking help, uh, and make sure they're okay. Uh, skills you'll be learning, performing assessments, calm under pressure, that's really important because they're going to be frantic. Um, and you have to approach them in a calm way. You don't want to add more fuel to the fire. Um, uh, I started the next one, pulling data from information gathered. Okay, That's something I think even at master levels they do. Um, because a lot of times clients will prevent so much information, you kind of have to pull what you think is important or what you think they need to change or work on. So that could be some uh, skill that you could be doing, you know, while you're in undergrad, you know, to build because you're going to be using that later on. Express genuine ep empathy and concern, establishing and maintaining rapport, on-the-job training for assessing risk of suicide, which is great. You want to be comfortable assessing risk of suicide. I think a lot of counselors, therapists don't get the necessary training for suicide, and I think it creates a lot of fear and a lot of avoidance on the topic. Uh, active listening skills and writing progress notes. Okay, um, so those are some good skills you'll learn as a crisis intervention specialist. Next up, early childhood teacher, youth care worker. Um, I think if you're going to be wanting to work with kids after you get your your degree, if you want to go into developmental psychology, um, again, this is really good experience. It's something to put on that resume. It's going to at least separate you from the people that don't have any experience. Okay? Your role will be a teacher or mentor. Mentor. Setting. 
office, school, child care center, or community center. Task, uh, evaluating kids' uh, needs of the child. De creating and implementing plans that are unique to the child. Work on development, uh, work to develop appropriate communication skills, physical and emotional boundaries, and regulation abilities. Um, I see this a lot. I work as a child therapist and I'm, uh, and there's a daycare where I work and I sometimes work in there and the daycare, I don't want to say daycare, they don't call it anymore, child care uh, is more appropriate. The child care workers, they're, they're regulating behavior. They're, they're prompting them to um, express them themselves or use different ways of expressing their emotions. So they're doing a lot of things that me as a child therapist do, but they sometimes have it better because when I get them for an hour, you know, they might be okay. They're not really in the moment, so it's hard to work with them. Uh, but as a child, care te uh, a child care teacher, you'll get that experience. Um, so conflict resolution and provide groups. Okay. So those are the task skills you can develop while being an early childhood teacher. Um, developing therapeutic relationships with children. Okay. Not always easy. <laughs> Uh, it's sometimes they're pretty guarded um, and it's it's hard to really develop that relationship sometimes developing plans that meet physical social emotional and intellectual needs of a child providing groups create and maintain accurate written records working as a team creating fun activities and play therapy All right. So if you ever, if you don't think you do play therapy as an early childhood teacher, I think you should probably pick up a play therapy book and read it and see what it is because you're probably doing a lot of that uh, already. So, um, so that would be a good skill to develop if you want to work with kids once you get your master's or doctorate. Play therapy is really popular. Um, it's something that we researched and know that works. It's effective. So it's a, it's a good therapy. It's a good tool to use. And as you can get practice and start building that skill uh, in undergrad, okay? I put retail on here. Now, this is for the people that really don't have any other options. Um, maybe you didn't get any of the jobs you applied for and you still want to build skills. Retail can help you a little bit, okay? There's certain retail. Retail is a big, broad, uh, what, uh, I can't even think of it, you know, but it's big and broad. Like you can do a lot in retail, but you want to focus on is customer service and sales. I would stay away from uh, food service, stock rooms, cashier, folding shirts at Old Navy. You know, those type of jobs are not going to give you anything um, as far as uh, skills of what you're going into. Okay, so setting, store, office, maybe do home visits. You know, get in the I don't know, window sales or something like that. You know, that's. You might have to go to home. Uh, you got to know how to communicate and sell. Uh, be customer oriented. Task helping customers with their needs. Skills, communication, interpersonal skills. Crisis intervention. I put that because I think uh, sometimes you have those little crisis. You got those uh, those irate customers that come in and holler at you. How do you how do you handle that? Okay. Problem solving, conflict resolution and I put in parentheses developing a thick skin that's gonna be in almost every job that I have on there you need to develop that okay you need to be above the names you will be called every name in the book especially in those inpatient settings you gotta learn to you know let it bounce right off you uh, and approach them in a calm orderly manner okay uh, critical thinking in retail uh, you know maybe um, working on a problem Maybe a customer comes to you with a problem, and you you got to kind of think of outside the box to help them. Uh, builds confidence with communi communicating with strangers. I know it did me. I was pretty introvert. I was kind of the quiet kid in class. Uh, didn't really say much, shy. But my first job at high school, you know, all I could do was retail, and you know, I started selling appliances and developing my communication skills, my interpersonal skills, how I relate to other people, how do I set up a conversation. Um, and I think that helped out a lot. Uh, I think it did. It really broke me out of my shell. Uh, you'll develop your style of communication, and you'll be customer-client-centered. All right, pretty similar, but 
again, if you don't have nothing else, retail, but within a retail field, you want to pick certain jobs, okay? Internship, university work, if you have that option, I said only if it applies to your future goals. Uh, your internship, they have like research in internship and you're going to clinical psych, perfect, perfect. Um, they have a job in the, you know, cafeteria sweeping floors, I can get nothing out of that. You know, financial aid office, I mean, what are you going to do there? What kind of skills are you going to build? Now, don't waste your time in these jobs that aren't going to give you the skills that you need for your future. Okay. Military. Um, I, I, I didn't think much of military, but then uh, uh, I started doing some just research, and they had some pretty nice positions um, in the Army. Behavioral Health Specialist, 68X is the MOS, and that's assisting in, with the management and treatment of inpatient and outpatient mental health activities. Um, the Air Force has something called Mental Health Service, and that's for enlisted only. Ensuring that every airman is mentally fit. Evaluate and provide mental health care to patients to help them overcome mental obstacles and issues. And behavioral health tech in the Navy provides, I don't know the MOSs, if, you, if you're interested, you call a recruiter, I'm sure they know, or you can Google it. Provides behavioral mental health care for service members. Assists psychiatrists and psychologists by performing assessments. Crisis triage and management, co-facilitation co of therapy groups, short-term counseling, training, and education classes. Military is not a bad, not a bad idea. I mean, besides you know basic training, you go to your your school and learn how to do this, um, and then you you know you, you're in the military for four years. Go get your undergrad in four years, and when you get out, you'll have tons of experience. Uh, you know, a college degree that you didn't have to pay for. It's not a bad deal um, if that's something you want to look into. Finances. Uh, I wanted to bring this up for, for people that are saying, oh, I can't change jobs. Um, you know, I got my bills. Uh, I, I just can't take a pay cut right now. And I understand that. I've been there. Uh, but I wanted to say that you never want to get into a position where you can't walk into your job and just say you quit. You don't want to be, be beholden to any job especially in the mental health field, because that will lead to burnout. If you feel that you're stuck in a job you hate, you're gonna burn out pretty quick. So whatever you gotta do to get your finances in order, uh, make it to where you have savings, you have not a lot of bills, um, and you, don't, you just don't wanna feel like you, know, you don't have any other options, and I said options equal freedom. So get your finances in order. If you're an undergrad right now, Wait, do not be buying anything expensive, you know. Um, the fancy cars, the house, you know, go modest. Wait till you get your master's or doctorate. And then wait till you, you know, I mean, don't wait too long, you know. You don't want to put it off too long, but be smart about it, okay. I put here every dollar in, uh, of debt you get into is sacrificing your freedom, okay. Just think about that when you're applying for a credit card app, um, okay. And uh, lastly, stay the course. You know, go all the way through. Uh, get your master's or PhD. Don't stop at the bachelor level. Those jobs suck. <laughs> uh, and, and they're high turnover, burn out real quickly. Um, and really the companies don't care uh, because they can just replace you for with one of the other 5,000 site grads that come out of school every year. Right? So keep, you know, keep going. Go, go to... Um, you know, whatever is closest to you, go, go to whatever college you can and get that master's degree. Um, explore online and night classes if, if you know, uh, if that's all you have, if you can't get into your, maybe the, the school you went to undergrad in. Explore something else, online night classes. Nobody cares, and I don't know if I'm going to offend anybody, but I, I'm going to be honest here. Nobody cares about where you get your degree from. Only that it is from accredited university and that you can get your license. It won't keep you from getting where you want to go. Once you get your license, the insurance companies pay the same. They're not going to pay someone from Yale differently than somebody who graduated from an online university. You know, they look at they look at your degree and your your license. Okay, um, but that's what I would recommend. Um, going all the way. I wouldn't stop. I did a five-year break and that was 
something I regret doing. I wouldn't do that. Um, okay. So that's all I have. I think that's the end. Yep. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Um, if you have anything to add, maybe you have experience working in a you know, call center and you want to give some advice maybe to somebody that's going into it that doesn't know, um, and you have uh, you know something you want them to know about when you go into it, you know, go ahead and leave it in the comments section below. Okay. Uh, but that's all I had. You have a good night. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. I think I have five subscribers, so if you can subscribe, that'd be great. Um, but thank you so much for watching, all right? You have a good night. Goodbye.